a look at document management through the eyes of um, the different departments within your organization and how it can be utilized within different uh, business units in your company. We start with the AP department. AP department is one of the most trouble spots in most organizations. Okay? Because you have these invoices that need to be approved and, and payment to be processed. The biggest complaint I hear every day is, we can't get the invoice approved on time because the department staff or the CFO are always traveling, they're at conferences, and we can't process the invoice without their approval, and they will not approve until they see the actual invoice. We can resolve all of that. So, invoice received, it gets stored to the document, into DocLink. Now, the staff, the approver, will get notified. Okay? Your question is, how will the approvers or the staff know that there are invoices waiting for their approval or action to take upon? One way is we send out email notification. The email notification is sent out per each document or invoice. And so all you need to have access is to your email. You don't need to have software loaded. You're not tied to the office. You just need access to your email. Because attached to the email would be the invoice or the document that you need to look at. It will have information of what that document is about. And note, directly from the email, you can approve or deny directly from the email. So you just need to open up the attachment, look at it, and then now just click approve or reject. Once you click on the approve or reject, it will be logged in our audit log of when you approved it or rejected. Okay? And then it will move the document automatically to the next stage or to the next person for review. But you're sitting there thinking, wow, that's great. However, we get hundreds of invoices in a day or a week, and we don't want to inundate the CFO with a, you know, hundreds of emails. Another option is, oh, by the way, we're also compatible with Android and mobile device. Okay? Another option is we can send news is what we call email alert. This alert can be sent out on time basis. It could be sent out hourly, at the end of the day, at the end of the week. You decide. This alert just to tell you that, hey, John, there are five invoices waiting for your approval. One is overdue because you uh, allow 24 hours to act on it, and it's past 24 hours. And one's priority because of early pay discount. We can even add a link to it, this email so that John just click on it, and it will take him to his, log, his workflow inbox. We have managers using this alert for reporting purpose also to know how many invoices came in, how many sitting on Joe's desk, how many sitting on Lisa's desk, how many are overdue, and so on. You are going to find that managers are going to love workflow because now you're able to track the workload of your staff to know exactly where the document's at in the approval process. But then the general staff going to hate workflow because it's now accountability. Okay? Now, a typical process. Invoice comes in into the AP staff. AP staff then route the invoice to the department staff for review and approval. Department staff often will write down the account code or job code on the invoice. And then eventually it makes its way back to the AP staff. AP staff have to try to read that handwriting and then input that same data in Sage. I'm not sure if you agree, but that's double work. That's a waste of company time there. But the reason why that has to be done is because the department staff do not have access to SAGE. Well, we can resolve that. Okay? So when invoice comes in, workflow will notify the department staff. Department staff would then log into DocLink. They will look at the invoice. But take a look at the right here. This is one of the key benefits to the integration with SAGE is that we are connected directly to your GL master file in real time. So instead of the department staff writing the account code on the invoice, they can just select it from a drop-down list. We can secure it down so they can only have access to certain, you know, their department codes, 
or if there are certain vendors that you deal with all the time using the same code, we can set that up as a default, just like the way you set up in Sage. And to further help minimize manual data entry, because we are connected to Sage, you can type, start typing in the vendor name. It will go to Sage and pull over all the information about that vendor, their vendor name, vendor number, the payment term, and so on and so on. Okay. So we do have ways to minimize manual data entry. So once you're done, the system is going to create a cover sheet with all that what we call coding information. It stays in our system uh, for part of your historical records and searching. But when you're ready, the system what's going to do is it's going to push all that coding that was performed in Docklink over to Sage. Now, my apologies, I know we have some Sage 100, Sage 500, and X3 uh, users on the line here. I cannot demonstrate all three at the same time. So here's just an example of a Sage 100, but the concept is the same. The screen just looks a little bit different. So what we do is we push all that coding that you just performed over from Docklink over to Sage so that the AP staff don't have to do the same data entry. Now, we're human, we make errors. Maybe the department staff selected the wrong code or the wrong dollar, uh, typing the wrong dollar amount. No problem. AP, you can still make the correction in Sage or in Docklink, and in the back end of the database, the system will update each other. Okay. So that's an example of the ability to perform what we call coding in Docklink without the need to have access to Sage. Now, you are going to run into some department staff that say, hey, we don't want to deal with selecting any code. We just like writing the code like we normally do on the invoice. They can do that. But let's help them go paperless. Instead of writing the code, and then AP can't read it very well, okay? They can use our annotation tools to um, type in a, uh, a sticky note or use our note uh, box area to type in that information, okay? So it's all searchable and now so it's easy for AP to read. You can even redact certain confidential information, add sticky note, draw a line. That is just part of the standard annotation tools that comes with document management. So now AP, when the invoice comes to you, you will have access and able to view them in Sage. You look at it, you perform your coding like you normally do. But when you're done, in the back end of the database, the system is going to push all that coding information over to Docklink, tying that information to the invoice, the packing slip, delivery tickets, and purchase order, all the documents associated with it. Now you're wondering, why do we need all that coding information uh, over in Docklink? It's so that staff can search for that information later on. Wouldn't it be nice to have the ability to go into Docklink and able to search for, hey, show me all any time we've been invoiced for GL code of 555-000300. Or show me all the invoice that we receive for a, uh, uh, for a company called Dellform. Okay, I'm sorry, ABC Distribution and Services. Okay? So this is why we want to have all that information over into Docklink tying to the document so that you can search for it later on. So that is one of the key benefits to Docklink because it is fully integrated with Sage. Data is being passed back and forth in real time. You will be able to have access to the document in Sage and in Ducklink. Okay. So now the invoice has been approved, and now you need to cut the payment. A feature I mentioned previously is ERM, Enterprise Report Management. So now when you process the payment in Sage, okay, we can automatically capture an image of that payment and store into Docklink, tying this payment to the invoice, the packing slip, delivery ticket, purchase order, and all the associated documents. 
When we capture an image of that payment, we also capture information about that payment. And again, it's for searching purpose. Please note, this payment here pay for multiple invoice, invoices. So yes, this one payment is tied to all those invoices. So later on, when Mr. Vendor called Joe, hey Joe, I sent you an invoice about you know, a month uh, a month ago, and I haven't received payments yet. And Joe does not have access to Sage. Joe doesn't have to call the AP department. Joe, with security permission, can go into Docling and search for that invoice, whatever invoice number it is, and it will bring up payment that's associated with that invoice. And now Joe can print it out, email it out, or, um, or fax it out. And yes, we can even add the word uh, non-negotiable or void on this payment if you folks are still printing out hard checks. Okay. So now you have the complete history of your documents that's associated with the invoice from beginning to the end. Okay. When you create purchase order in Sage, a copy of gets stored to Docklink. When the good or services gets delivered, your shipping or receiving department can store the packing slip delivery ticket into DocLink at that instant. Now when the AP staff receives the invoice, they store it to DocLink. That gets connected to all the associated supplemental documents, and then they can do the matching and, and coding at that time. No need for, you know, for those documents to, to get to the uh, AP staff. Okay. So now that all the documents are in the system, let's talk about searching, because that's the key to having a document management system. I already mentioned to you that you're able to able to search for the documents in Sage, but there will be many staff who do not have access to Sage. So they will be able to search for documents through DocLink. Here's an example of the user interface screen of DocLink. Note, our system, we can accommodate multiple companies. Some of you may have one company, some of you may have 10, 15, 20 different companies. All your companies can be using the system. Okay. When you store documents into our system, you need to tell it what type of document is it. Is it an invoice? Is it an AP check? Is it a, a void memo, a credit memo, purchase order, and so on and so on. The purpose of the document type is here for two primary reasons. One, security. When John logs in, the system is going to check which company John have, is allowed to have access to. And within that company, which document, what type of documents is he allowed to have access to? Okay. Maybe John is allowed to have access to all the invoice and documents, but ja, John is only allowed to have access to certain vendor invoices. Let's say all tech. John is not allowed to have access to uh, Verizon's or Home Depot and so on and so on. We can secure it down to that level. Okay. Now also is, and let's talk about the searching. Okay. You can search for all documents within all your company for a particular vendor. Or you can narrow it down. You can filter it down. Give me only the AP invoice for Fabricon Company with a, based on a particular invoice number. You can do wildcard search. Um, take example the name Anderson. Some people spell with S-E-N, some people spell with S-O-N. So by using the wildcard search, you can be certain that you're going to find all documents or invoices associated with the name Anderson. You can do a Boolean search, and or not. You can do relational search, in other words, date ring search. Give me all the invoices that we paid for on a particular date, or last week, or last month, or last year. We also have customers using our system for retention schedule. I bet that you have retention schedule with your documents. In other words, by law, you are required to keep certain documents for X number of years, and after that, you are required to purge them or destroy them. Okay? 
So you probably don't have a real way of tracking those documents. But with DocLink, you are able to do so. You are able to apply retention schedule and able to track those documents, able to search for those documents based on the retention date. Or what about certain documents that um, expires? For example, your contract. Wouldn't it be nice to track the contract to you know when it expires and so that way you can renew those contracts based on the expiration date. So for now, I'm just going to search for an invoice based on a particular invoice number. I click on search. Now the system found only one invoice based on that invoice number and here's all the information about the invoice. But we can go deeper than that. Let's say what if Danica uh, wants to know all those doc, all document that's associated with this purchase order number. You just click on it and the system will bring up all documents associated with that purchase order number. Now you just select them all and with another simple click, the system is going to bring up all the documents on a towel format or on the thumbnail format. There's no need for you to have multiple screens open or open and close, open and close. Okay, so no, we have the purchase order. The, that uh, when the purchase department creates the purchase order, a copy of it gets thrown to the system. Now when the goods or services gets delivered, the receiving department do the receipting and they will store a copy of the packing slip into Duckling and that gets tied to the purchase order. Now when the AP staff receives the invoice, that gets stored into the system and gets tied to, the, to the, all the other documents. Now AP staff loves this viewer screen because guess what? Now they can do the manual matching. They can compare on the screen the invoice to the packing slip and the purchase order and do the three-way matching, manual matching, okay? There's no need to wait for those documents, the packing slip and purchase order. It's all there in the system already. We also, by the way, have a way we can set up to do automatic matching where we can compare the invoice dollar amount to the purchase order dollar amount. And if it meets within a certain threshold, it will automatically move the document to the next stage for payment. If it doesn't, it will notify department um, AP or the appropriate staff for action. We can also compare, do matching of the line, by the line item, comparing the quantity, the dollar amount to the purchase order if you like. We can help you to be as automated as possible. Okay, and then of course, finally, when you cut the payment, the payment gets tied or linked to all those documents. So you have the whole complete history from beginning to end. Okay. So that's a little bit about the AP invoices. What about do some of you have corporate company credit card? Okay, how can we help you with that? So as you know, many banks now offer the statement in CSV format. Okay, so what we do is we create a, a template of your credit card statement. And then now all we have to do is you import in that bank statement, the CSV file. And then with a simple click, our system will create a separate statement per each cardholder with their itemized charges. And now you can upload the receipt and attach the receipt to each line item. You use workflow, our workflow to route it around for review and approval, okay? And if you want to go further than that, you can also do GL coding of the by the line item. Maybe some of the charges are to be charged to a particular customer. So you can do your GL coding and then we can push all that data over to Sage so you don't have to do double data entry. A task that's been taking your AP staff hours or days to, re to reconsolidate your corporate credit card are now down to literally minutes. Okay. What about um, expense report? I'll bet you that you, some of you are still using the good old Excel spreadsheet. Well, we can help with that. So what we do is we will create a template of your expense report. So as the staff are traveling with our mobile app module, the staff can take pictures of the receipt. It gets uploaded and then it gets automatically uploaded to the DocLink system. And then when they're ready, when they come back from the trip, 
okay? They can fill out the expense report because we are connected to all the expense code in SAGE. So they can select the description and it will autofill the expense code. Okay, the dollar amount, everything is already coming in from your mobile device. So now, and if they, uh, the system will automatically create the expense report with their itemized charges with the receipt attached to each line item. And now you use, you use workflow to route it around for review and approval. And if you want, you can do your GL coding of those line items and we can push it to Sage. So that way AP don't have to do the same data entry. So as you can see, the system is a lot more than just the storage and retrieval of your documents. Okay, what about your AR department? Okay, many of you are do, um, processing or create, uh, generating AR invoices monthly. Okay. And when you send out your AR invoices, sometime your customer wants to see a copy of the signed delivery ticket or a copy of the purchase order or the contract that goes with that invoice. So staff will have to go look for those documents, scan it in or make copies of it and attach it to the invoice and then they have to manually email it out or print it out or fax it out. Well, we can help with that. All you have to do is create the invoice in Sage. We will store a copy of the invoice in Stocklink. We will then look for those signed delivery tickets or the copy or the purchase order or the contract and automatically attach it to your invoice and then automatically email it out for you because we can read the email address on the invoice or in Sage or some database that you have and we will automatically email it out for you on time you know, basis. We can also electronically fax it out if you have using electronic faxing. If we don't recognize that then we will automatically send it to a default printer. Okay, so again, we can gather your supplemental document and attach it to the invoice and automatically send it out. So attached to the email would be the invoice and also the, here's an example of a signed delivery ticket. And all you have to do is just create the invoice and that's it. The same tools can be used, for example, for purchase order, when you create purchase order. And now you have to send it out to the vendors. And sometimes you want to attach delivery instructions or the terms and conditions. Okay? So if those documents are living in the Docklink system, when you generate the purchase order, it will go and look for those documents and automatically attach it to the purchase order and automatically email it out to the vendors. The same tools can also be used for the sales order side of the house for the processing uh, uh, um, of your um, order acknowledgement, setting it out automatically, okay? All right, what about your accounting manager? What are their concerns? Of course, is visibility to the document, to the invoice. Where is it in the approval process? And of course, is to make, you know, uh, uh, make your staff more efficient and, and of course, reduce manual data entry, okay? So, we have a full audit log that will track every single activity. Who logged in, what date, what time, what action was performed to which documents. With this audit log here, it helps you comply with HIPAA requirements. Okay? You can secure your staff down to what permission, what function did you want them to perform in the system. You may decide that certain staff were able to have the ability to search and view documents, but you can restrict it so that they can't email it or can't print it or can't delete it and so on and so on. Yes, it's down to the granular level. And of course, is visibility to the documents, able to know exactly where the document's at in the approval process. So wouldn't it be nice when Mr. Vendor calls you up, hey Joe, I sent you an invoice a month ago, what's going on? Joe don't have to call AP. Joe doesn't have to track it down. Joe can just log into the system and with his security permission, he will be able to know exactly where that invoice is at. So here's some invoices that's waiting for AP review. Some invoice that's waiting for, that has this invoice not approved. Some invoice just came in and not, no action has been performed yet, okay? 
Okay, what about the CFO? Of course, his job is to make sure that you, you know, reduce the company overhead costs and, sa and save the company as much money as possible, and also to simplify the auditing process. So yes, many of you, I bet you, are paying for off-site storage. All that cost can be eliminated, okay? And that is, the, with the savings there, it pays for the system, for the document management system itself. And some of you have get audits all the time. So what you can do is you can provide a login to the auditors, and they can go in and do their own searching. But you may have external auditors, okay? So what you can do is you can go in. Maybe the auditor wants to you, hey, Lisa, I need for you to produce for me all these AP documents for all the companies that you have and within a certain year or date range. So you input that data, and with a simple click, in literally a second, the system will bring up the search result for you. One of the things that you're going to find that Doclink have one of the fastest search speed engine in the industry. You can literally have stored the whole congressional library, and it will literally find your documents in seconds. Okay, I and and, and trust me, I have seen system where you can conduct a search before you go to lunch, and when you come back from lunch, it's still searching. So that's something you want to watch out for. So here's a list of documents the system found. Now you can download it to a CD or a DVD, but when you download, you also have the ability to include the DocLink search engine to that CD so that the auditor can go into that CD and search. Maybe they want to see uh, the system to bring up all the checks for a vendor, Sinclair, any time that you uh, provide a payment to Sinclair, a company called Sinclair. They can, they can do that search. I have company where they use it in their legal department. When they go to court, they search for all the documents pertaining to that case. They download it to a CD. Now the attorney at court can search for those documents using the document search engine while the opponent is dealing with papers. Just ideas of the, how you can use a search uh, capability. Okay. Now. Uh, again, I am going to remind you, the system is an enterprise document management system. Many companies will start the system in the AP side of the house, because that's your most trouble spot. But then they will expand the same system to AR, to HR departments, and so on and so on. HR is the second most paper-intensive department in most companies. So yes, we have the security to help you HR comply with HIPAA requirements to secure your HR files. We also can help streamline your onboarding process because when you onboard new staff, there are a lot of documents that need to be completed and signed and a lot of action to perform. So we can help you comply with the onboarding process. Also in using our system, you can track the certification of your employee and get them recertified on a timely manner. Okay. I already talked about the security. So yes, you can set it up so certain staff can have access to only certain documents into the system. And so yes, you can keep the department staff out of or having access to the HR files. Okay. And as I mentioned, when you onboard new staff, there are a lot of action to be performed to help you comply with the hiring process. We make sure that you keep track of all of the action that's been done and also is storing or able to track and keep all your employee files all together in one place. Okay. IT, yes, we have the system. So if something happens to your data, we can restore that information, all your documents and information. We have the security. We have the, you have the ability to delegate work workflow task to other staff. Okay. An example of a news for your cell side of the house. We have the ability um, to monitor your email server. So when, for example, uh, when order comes in, it goes, it, um, your customer's emailing to, to an email address. We can monitor your email server for a specific email address 
So when any time anything comes into that email address, we automatically grab the documents, store it into the system, and then Workflow will notify the appropriate staff. So yes, the same tool can be used for your AP invoices, okay, where we can monitor your email server, and anytime when invoices are being emailed to you, we automatically grab it, store it into the system, and then notify the appropriate staff. There's no need to wait for the staff to, to monitor their email and to store those documents into the system one by one. Okay. Also, when you receive documents via your mobile app, you have the ability to store that into DuckLink. Okay, now we have customer using a system for contract management purpose. We have version control, check-in, check-out capability for document collaborations. So let's say you have a draft a contract, it's in Word format. You can store that draft contract into DocLink. Now Workflow notifies the appropriate staff to review and edit that contract. The staff now can check that document out, okay? When they check that document out, no one else can work on that same contract. They can view it, but they can't work on it. Once they're done, they check it back in. When they check it back in, the system will create version number two, and then version number three, and so on and so on. So the purpose of version control is to eliminate multiple people from working on the same document at the same time and keeping the complete history of your document. So now when the staff are going in searching for that contract based on their security permission, if they can only view the final version of that contract or the complete history of that contract. Our system can store content. So your files can be in any format, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, video files, audio files, AutoCAD drawings. I have engineering departments storing AutoCAD drawings. I have sheriffs storing ex, um, vi, uh, pictures of crime scenes and audio files of crime scene and videos. I have HR departments storing uh, employee digital pictures for security identification. Files can be stored into our system in any format. And because we can store files in any format, because we have version control for document collaborations, more and more customers are storing their draft documents into DocLink instead of giving it on the network share folder. Okay, so we have the system can be used in any industry, storing any types of documents. So if you folks, some of you folks are in the manufacturing industry, here are just some samples of documents that you can store into the system, all the way from beginning to the end when you have the finished product, okay? For some of you who are in the distribution um, uh, market, to able to track your supporting docs and to able to have access to those documents when you, you're outside the field. So we have the web module. So through a, through, with internet connection, through a web portal, you'll be able to search for documents, able to have access to your workflow inbox so you can review and approve off on your documents, okay? Or those, uh, if you are in the field service industry, the system's going to help you, make, you know, make, uh, comply with your requirements and able to expedite your billing process. When you're out in the field and you access a work order, you render the service, and now you just tell the system that it's done. The system now, the workflow, will then notify the AR department for invoicing. It's that quick. You do not need to wait for the field service people to come back into the office give the signed delivery ticket or a work order ticket to the AP, uh, AR staff, and then AR then can finally invoice. And you can invoice in literally real time, okay? Also, we have online forms if, all, if that's necessary. So we have all the tools to help you, each of your departments meet their internal requirements for managing and processing of their department documents, okay? 
You can use it inter enterprise-wide. That's another return the investment. You started in one area, and you can expand the same system company-wide. We don't care how much data you store into the system. We do not charge you a dime more. Okay. So now that you have a, a, a understanding uh, of our solution offering and ideas of how it can be utilized within different business units within your organization, now it's up to you to take the initiative, you know, like what is the next step? Is to reach out to um, our KL and um, to move forward with the next step so that we can help you to go paperless. So with that said, um, we are going to now open up for any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. The lines have been unmuted, so if anyone has any questions, you can just speak up or type them into the chat box. Hello, this is Karen Anderson with AssetMark. I have a question concerning how the data from the invoice gets into the system. Does the system try to read invoice number and vendor name and then attach it to the SAGE vendor ID, or do you have to key that in? A good question. Um, we can do it in several ways. If, uh, for example, it's a PO invoice, Okay. Um, when the it invoice will not be. It will not be. Okay. So let's say non-PO invoices. Uh, to ha you have the option for the minimal cost option is yes. You can e key into that information in into DocLink, and then we push that data over to Sage. The automated way is using OCR, where we you batch scan or we can batch import in all those invoices into the system. OCR can read several ways. We can read what we call header and footer information. Header would be vendor name, vendor number, invoice number, invoice date, and so on and so on. The footer information would be the, you know, the subtotal, tax, shipping, and the dollar amount, and bring it into the system so that you don't have to do manual data entry. And then what we do is we push that data with the integration with Sage. Docling is going to push that data over to Sage. Okay. So do you see it before the data goes to Sage, assuming that the OCR isn't going to be perfect all the time? Very good point. Or do you, or do you fix it in Sage? The rule of thumb for OCR is garbage in, garbage out. So yes, there is no OCRing in the in, in the industry that will give you 100% accuracy. It's all depending on the quality of the document. So when systems store your documents into DocLink and it will read the information, it will give if there is any discrepancy. So maybe it read, it tried to read the one and it, it read it as an I or a T instead. It will then notify, or throw the, that invoice into an exception folder and it can notify your AP staff so that they can do the, what we call editing in DocLink, okay? Um, and, but if it reads it properly, then it just automatically moves the invoice to the next stage for processing. So yes, you will make the correction in DocLink first before it goes over to Sage. But, like I said, we're human, we make errors. If you do find that there is still a discrepancy, you can still make the correction in Sage or in DocLink at any time, and it will, the system will update each other. Now, obviously, you need to make the correction before you post. But remember, the document will always be living in the DocLink repository, okay? Um, so does that answer your question, Karen? Yes, thank you. And we will be happy, you know, like to set time aside to show you a live demonstration and go through the OCR process and show you what the editing process would be or what it would look like when there's an exception or uh, so on. Now, just an FYI for you. So to minimize the editing, many of our customers are, re, uh, what they do is they, rec they create a generic uh, vendor email address, uh, invoice email address. Then they ask the vendor to email the invoices to them because all invoices are, or most invoices are generated from some kind of e you know, accounting software. So you tell your vendor, 
I can, you know, the benefit for you, Mr. Vendor, is if you email it to me, I get it faster and you get paid faster. You will save money because you don't have to pay, you know, pay for stamp and you don't have to stuff envelope. So that would be the benefit for them. So why would they not want to email it to you? When they email it to you in electronic format, you will literally get 99.9% .9 accuracy because it's a first generation version of that document. The benefit for you is you don't have to scan them in. We can, OCR will automatically grab the invoice from that email address and, and store it into the system and read that information. So if you're thinking of going paperless, encourage your vendors to email the invoices to you because you don't have to scan and you will also minimize manual data entry and editing time. Good question. Anyone else? Uh, I have a question that came across the chat meant the document Dep management system. Good question. Um, depending on the number of modules that you need, for example, we have customers say, hey, I just want to store documents and search for documents. Okay. An implementation like that along with training, you know, you're talking about within a week and a half period. Then we have customers say, I want to do the you know, process invoices and able to route for workflow approval and do coding and doubling and passing data back and forth between stage. Something like that, you're looking at about about two weeks time period. Okay? But then we have customers that want to add the expense reporting and, and credit card and HR. So it would then just expand from there. But typically uh, it, it takes about you know, alone between three to five days for training and then, of course, the implement, implementation for about another week or so. Okay, great. Um, looks like there's one last question. How much does a system like this cost? Well, again, the system is very expandable. Um, to determine the cost, it Determine, we need to determine what are your requirements and um, also the users to determine the licenses that you need. The best thing to do is to contact your uh, RKO uh, rep and we will schedule a discovery call because we need to understand your challenges and your requirements. What is it you're trying to do? What business unit? Are you looking to use it for AP invoicing side of the house, AR, HR, you know, where? And then we will then we're able to put together a uh, cost estimate for you. Okay. All right. I think that's all the questions. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, Laura for this great presentation.